Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week, 10 days for today's fur video. So day 10 is going to take us to the 23rd of November. And uh, we'll be able to excel beyond that with the Synergy FS and ECM Ensembles. Very much around a couple of weeks. So we'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which gets us into the uh, first half of December. I'll get on that for you very shortly. Just say that the first video release is our 7 a.m. upload. We've also released the week ahead forecast. And if all of that was enough, we're going to have the uh, fourth installment of the Christmas countdown coming up for you uh, later on this evening at around 7 p.m. So that'll be a bit of fun, and we'll have a look at the uh, long-range CFS uh, for Christmas with that one. Uh, right, so uh, before we get on uh, with all of that, though, uh, just say that uh, we've picked up a new channel member. did a live stream last night. Lovely, lovely live stream. Absolutely epic. Thank you so much, everybody, um, who was, uh, you know, on the live stream. It's a, it's a lovely hour or so um, live stream uh, last night. And uh, during the live stream, uh, we had some donations, and we also picked up a channel member. So I'm going to say thank you so much to our latest uh, guest, our channel member, WD. Thank you so much to WD for becoming our latest uh, Gaz Weatherviz channel member. It's incredible and amazing. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, you know, I've got over 60 channel members. It's epic, absolutely epic. Thank you so much to all of our channel members. All of our patrons, all of our PayPal donors uh, as well, have you support the channel. Just a big, big thank you to all of you. If you'd like to become a channel member uh, for Gaz, all, all you need to do is come to Gazworth's YouTube homepage, which you can find on desktop or via the YouTube app. Click the join button, and it take you through to another page uh, where you'll see what benefits you get for becoming a channel member, and you can sign up on that page as well. So thank you so much to all of our channel members, and special thank you to WD. Will be coming Gaz Weatherford's latest channel member. That is incredible. Thank you so much. Right, let's start the video then. We're going to begin by having a look at the central England temperature. So the CT is now gone above nine degrees. We're standing at uh, a mild 9.1. That's 1.2 degrees above average. That's provisional to uh, yesterday, the 12th of uh, November. So up and up it goes. We'll see how much further. That goes before it levels off and maybe starts to come down into the second half of the month. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles the next couple of weeks. We're at London today, so the red line is a 30 year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off at a little bit above average at the moment. It's not going to be quite as warm as it has been over recent days, but nevertheless, it's hardly going to be cold. And uh, as we go through towards the end of next week, actually, we get another sort of push up in the uh, upper air temperature. There might be a bit of cooling trend in evidence as we go on in towards the final week of November. We might have some colder ensemble members appearing then, but uh, keep an eye on the thick green line up here. That is the uh, GFS Midnight Operational Run, um, which, you know, uh, is uh, looking really quite mild. You'll see it in a moment. It's not an outlier because there are other ensemble members doing the same, but it was like at the warmest end of the range for, uh, for um, you know, uh, the ensemble members. Two days, right? Could be loads of dry weather as well, but dry spell continues uh, for the next week to 10 days, maybe a little bit more unsettled towards the end of the month, but again, that's a very long way off and uh, is unreliable. If we just flip this over to the uh, 6Z, uh, so these other GFS ensembles of the 6Z. Again, you see, same idea. Next week, 10 days, is going to be pretty mild. Then after that, there's a drop in the temperature that's going on. Um, so a bit of a cool down through the last week of November is possible. Looks like the GFS uh, 6Z operational room was also one of the warmest ensemble members again as well. We do have the control that's dropping down into uh, a much colder level though. Uh, precipitation wise again, loads of dry weather next week, 10 days, and then maybe a little bit more unsettled into the last week of the month, but that is in the unreliable time frame of the GFS and its ensembles. So the upshot is temperature anomalies from the 13th to the 21st of November are gonna be milder than average again. And you've guessed it, the precipitation anomaly from the 13th to 21st of November is going to be drier than average. But warm, dry spell continues. Later on from that from EarthNollSchool.net shows that there is a deep area of low pressure in the Atlantic, but is being held at bay by heights rising over not just the UK, but much of Northern and West Europe. It's a deep low up here to south of Greenland, but that's going to be kept at bay as a high pressure is going to take over yet again. 
across much of Northern, Central and Western Europe. So this is how the UK Met Euro is looking for midnight on Tuesday with a ridge of high pressure building through England and Wales. That will bring mostly dry weather. Watch out for some dense patches of fog, a little bit more unsettled to the far north and northwest. Moving through to Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to turn a bit more unsettled in the northern half country. We're showing sure outbreaks of rain in the west southwest wind. Meanwhile, further south under high pressure, the uh, dry and mild spell will continue. Now, late on, the, uh, G the uh, UK mayor um, sort of builds up high pressure even stronger. So, uh, by the time we get through to this time next week, midnight Saturday, uh, we're actually got a 1,030 millibar area of high pressure sat over and just to the east of the country. We would still have warm upper air temperatures at this point, but on the surface, it's possible because that high pressure is becoming centrally located and slightly to east. It's possible we will start be starting to cool things down, probably clearing away a lot of low clouds, so we'd have clear skies, which means at night it could get quite cold. We might get some fog and uh, maybe an increased risk of some frost going through to next weekend. Although technically that is still a warm ridge. And of course, very dry as well into next weekend. That's as far as we go with the UK Met Euro. This is how the midnight run of the GFS uh, is looking, or was looking. So again, high pressure is ridging through the country through the open half next week. Then it turns a little bit more unsettled in the northern half of the country. Second half next week, still in the south, mostly dry under the area of high pressure. Into the weekend, the high pressure becomes uh, dominant again across more southern areas anyway. A little bit more unsettled to the north and west. That gets us up to Sunday. Now beyond that, we find that the uh, GFS midnight run then starts to develop this area of low pressure to the north of Scotland pushes that eastwards and in its wake it starts to try and build some higher pressure around Iceland. It's trying to get a little bit colder around day 10. In fact, it probably would get uh, a little bit colder with an increasing risk of some overnight frost. Nothing really comes of that area of high pressure. It tries to get going to our north, but the high sort of slips to our east and, and is in control of the weather, still keeping the low pressures uh, bay out in the Atlantic. We're drawing up like a southerly to southeasterly wind. It's southerly wind, but the air is like east of south, you see what I mean? So that wouldn't be necessarily all that, all that warm, to be honest. Although, uh, you know, the upper air temperatures are quite warm. If we go back here and go back to midnight run and see that, yes, the upper air temperatures are quite quite warm. You know, it's, it's warm, sort of southerly, southeast wind that we're drawing up from an upper air temperature perspective. On the surface, that's not necessarily guaranteed to be overly warm. Could actually be a little bit on the cold side, especially, you know, again, if we've got clear skies and uh, overnight miss some fog and, and frost uh, developing. So, um, don't yeah, you know, still anti-cyclonic, but that's, that's the main feature with this that the high pressure fest goes on and on there's no sign of it really breaking down until very late on end of the gfs midnight road is 29th november so that's pushed some lower pressure through there but of course that is over two weeks away the six air looks like this so uh, once more high pressure is in control on uh tuesday and then into the second half of next week, a bit more unsettled in the north, mainly dry. The south area of high pressure is building up from the south, telling us mostly dry, even in the north, uh, through into next weekend. But again, same sort of idea from the 6th said, as we move up towards day 10, we begin to get higher pressure building out to our northwest, or having a go anyway. So that starts to pull in something a little bit colder from the north to northeast there, as we head up towards day 10. This is the 22nd of November, high pressure to the south of Iceland, um, starting to pull in. In, you know, a colder northeasterly, maybe even colder to bring a few wintry showers onto those eastern and uh, northeastern coastal areas. Doesn't last all that long, but definitely around days nine and ten, it is colder with this area of high pressure away to our north and west. And again, same idea as a midnight road, really. The high pressure slips southwards, sits over the country. It's a cold ridge, so it will produce overnight frost and fog before it slips away into central parts of Europe and we start to bring up this milder southerly uh, southeasterly wind as low pressure develops out to the west and eventually the six air breaks down the region turns us unsettled uh, with low pressure in off the Atlantic by month's end and a little bit colder with that low pressure as well winds coming in from the uh, northwest and the air originating from Greenland and Iceland. 
Called the second half to November with a six there, definitely. Um, this is how the GM is talking. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. And drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. We've got around 85 subscribers now to get to 11.6k. Thank you so much. Uh, right, the uh, six, the uh, GM, I should say, looks like that. With high pressure in the south, lower pressure out to the northwest on uh, Tuesday. Wednesday through to Thursday, uncertain in the north, mainly dry under a ridge of high pressure in the south. Into the weekend, turns a little bit more unsettled and slightly colder with winds going into the northwest and then into the north. So the GM is turning things cold next weekend, a little bit more unsettled as well with some showers and some long spells of rain. Uh, not colder for long though, the high pressure ridges back into the south, but turn wind back into the west. So, um, very quickly we turn milder again, although by day 10, which is 23rd of November, perhaps just hinting that it might be going a bit colder again, uh, with winds getting back in towards uh, a northwesterly direction. And then the ECM, finally, for the charts, it's looking like that. So once more, high pressure reaching through the country on Tuesday, mostly dry weather. Unsettled uh, around the middle part of the week, or more unsettled in the north around the middle part of the week anyway. Then it's the second half of the week, south is mostly dry into the ridge, north is a little bit more unsettled. Heading up towards day 10. Again, we bring down this slightly colder northwesterly to northerly um, on the uh, 21st of November. So this is like 20th to 21st of November next weekend. Turns colder with that north northwest. It doesn't last very long. High pressure ridges in and we cut off that northerly very quickly. But it is like a, a couple of cold days uh, next weekend with the ECM as well. Precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tomedshow.com looks like that. With some rain in the north and west, mostly dry down in the south and the southeast, it must be said. Um, so uh, we keep this sort of pattern going really through towards uh, the end of the ECM run. So it's a little bit more unsettled, more southern, southeastern areas as we head up towards day 10. A little bit of rain coming through there. But overall, fundamentally, it is still a high pressure that's dominating the weather for the next week to 10 days. These are the options that are on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10, which gets us to the 23rd of November. 16 members of the ECM Ensembles have low pressure to the north and high pressure to the south. They're going to be driest in the south, wettest in the north, and will be mild. 11 with low pressure over to the east of the country. Jet stream going uh, north and south east. That could be a little bit cold, but quite unsettled. Another 11 with high pressure right over the top of the country. That could be mainly dry, probably a little bit cold in that area of high pressure. 7 including the operational run, um, again, with a lot of high pressure in control of the weather. And then six, uh, just here, again, with high pressure, maybe reaching towards Scandinavia, trying to pull in a little bit more of an easterly wind uh, with those six uh, options. Most of the options at day 10 seem to involve high pressure in one form or another. The only question is whether high sits or whether it's a warm ridge or a cold ridge. In two weeks' time, these are the options uh, that we've got. Now, this is quite interesting. This is 28th of November. I have 21 members of the ECL Ensembles then taking the high pressure to Scandinavia. There is quite a lot of low pressure in the Atlantic, so I'm not sure how long that Scandinavian high would last as this low. Uh, low pressure, you know, is really trying to break it down. But uh, that could get wind into a colder easterly, maybe, uh, by month's end. We have 20 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure, bringing low pressure through the country. So, um... Uh, so, yeah, you know, that's going to be very unsettled. Low pressure will come through the country uh, and Western Europe uh, with those 20. And then 10 with high pressure over and slightly to the south, southwest. That's going to be mostly dry and relatively mild uh, with that one. We might get colder by month's end, but of course it does remain to be seen. Uh, CFSV2 finally beats the 500 millibar heights breaking down to week beers. The first week beer will take from the 13th to the 19th of November. The coming week again is dominated by high pressure, so lots of dry weather. And uh, pretty mild. Temperatures will gradually cool down a little bit, but overall uh, pretty mild. Uh, week 2 will be the 20th, 26th of November. High pressure goes out to our west. Still mainly dry, but we would start to bring in something a little bit cooler, maybe slightly colder, uh, to the north and east in particular. 
This trough of low pressure in the east and northeast Europe is bringing, bringing a big plunge of winter into northern and northeast Europe there, by the way. We're on the periphery of that, going to get high pressure further out in that direction, start pulling in those uh, really cold north northeasters. But probably it would be a little bit cooler with, uh, at the very least, some overnight frost, I would have thought. Uh, week three is going to be the 27th of November to the 3rd of December with high pressure just out to our west. Again, mainly dry. Could be a bit on the cool side. Wings in from the uh, northwest. And then week four is going to be the 4th through to the 10th of December. High pressure well and truly in control. More or less over top of the country, slightly to our north, which could allow something a little bit colder to start coming in from the east. We're very close to pulling in a cold easy mode. Just going to get the high pressure, maybe a couple of hundred miles further north, northeast, centre it. Uh, so let's say we centre, where the centre is, is where we've got this uh, grey area. So the centre is like Scotland and slightly to the north of Scotland. If we get that high pressure around 300 miles further north to there, then uh, we will start pulling in cold easterly winds. So we're not all that far away there from pulling in a cold easterly. As it is, I think that'd be pretty, uh, it'd be very dry, of course, under a big area of high pressure, but probably quite cold with an, uh, with an increasing risk of frost and also fog, but not much in the way of snow. Uh, not yet, anyway. Right, if you enjoyed the video, then please give me a smash your like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's know anything about this and all of our videos. That is incredible and amazing. If you do give us a sub, you're going to be able to see future web content, including uh, future uh, videos, future live streams, future Christmas updates, and future winter updates as well. And that brings me on very nicely to the rest of the content. So for, uh, coming up today, uh, last video today at 7pm is going to be the latest Christmas update. Christmas countdown number four will be released at 7pm. And then tomorrow at 7am forecast, we're going to have part one of the 11th winter 2021-2022 update. Um, it's going to be a bit of an so special uh, this week, the 11th update. So we're going to, uh, you know, be discussing La Nina amongst everything else, of course. Part 2 will be released on uh, Monday at 6pm. And, of course, that one is going to be the analogue side of things, and that will be Enso Analogs, La Nina-based analog. So it's going to be an interesting 11th update. Make sure you check out that. We'll be live-streaming from 6pm tomorrow. But so live-streaming is back after having a week off last week. So, um, so yeah, check out live-streaming at 6pm. We'll show you some long-range, probably CFS, and certainly Batal Peng. And uh, that will all be coming up on Sunday from 6pm. Well, I'll have the fourth uh, installment of Christmas Countdown at 7pm, but you enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon, and we'll see you later for the Christmas update. But for this one, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.